everyone. It's Shamila Ramjawan coming to you from the Red Corner Show in Johannesburg, South Africa. It is now 8 p.m. in Johannesburg. And I'm going to be speaking to my guest, Angela Posilico, who is in Florida, USA. And it is now 2 p.m. there. Angela is the... Are you the founder of Miss International World? I'm the CEO of Miss International World and Miss Latina International. And I'm, I'm one of the founders. I had a few people that did help me find the organization. So you could say I'm one of the founders. But they put me as the CEO. So that is really my role. Awesome. Congratulations and well done on that. And you're doing an amazing job. You know, I've been looking at your social media and it's just fantastic. And I want to hear all about it. But before we get into it, Angela, maybe tell me a little bit about your background, your education, family, anything that you'd like to add. Okay. Well, I was born and raised in uh, Bergen County, New Jersey. Um, so I'm a, uh, a Northeast girl. I worked in Manhattan for over 27 and a half years. Um, I was very lucky to uh, hook up with Cosmere, which was really Lancome. So I worked for Lancome Cosmetics and I was a trainer for them. Worked in some of the top tours in New York City, like uh, Bergdorf Goodman, Saks, Bloomingdale's. Met a lot of celebrities working on that job. And that was probably my introduction into the pageant world because so many, you know, beauty queens want to come in and they want knowledge on makeup and if they're going on stage, what's the perfect makeup to wear. But before that, uh, my career was, I actually was a professional singer. I graduated the Juilliard Academy of Music in New York City with a master's degree in operatic studies. So I'm opera trained. So all of that led to me starting my own pageant. And just to give you an example, when I was working in cosmetics, a lot of the beauty queens hired me to do their makeovers for some of the pageants that they were competing in. But then one day, uh, while I was doing makeup in the back room, they said the, the entertainer didn't show up. So somebody back there said, oh my God, Angela sings. And I said, wait a minute, I'm not dressed for it. I'm dressed to do makeovers. But I was lucky because I did have a disc in the car. And at that time they were using discs. So I got my disc and I performed. And from that point on, I never did another face on a pageant again. All I did was ever sing. Every pageant hired me to perform. I even went to Greece and sang out there for an international pageant. So uh, that is what led me to starting my own pageant and now becoming CEO of Miss International World. So that, that's the Reader's Digest version. That sounds so exciting. So um, Angela, do you still sing? What do you sing? Well, I could sing a little bit of everything. Uh, I was very blessed in uh, 1990 to do the East Coast tour of Phantom of the Opera. And I played the part of Christine Daae. So I was one of the uh, main characters in that. I had a great gentleman by the name of Paul Stevio who played the Phantom. And uh, I mean, I love to sing R&B. I love to sing jazz, but I'm very opera trained. That's probably where I feel most comfortable singing. But I, I still sing from time to time. In fact, uh, two years ago at 100 Successful Women in Business, and I have to congratulate you because I see you're going to be one of the recipients, they had asked me to sing the national anthem there. And most people didn't even know that I could sing. So from that point on, I guess you could say I restarted my singing <laughs> career. So, uh, you know, I sometimes I just do it as a pastime, but it's always something that I do go back to. So, but like I said, I could sing a little bit of everything. If you ask me to sing jazz, you ask me to sing blues, you ask me to sing the opera. Once you have that training, you can go in any capacity. Thank you so much for that. Yes, I'm looking forward to the awards event this weekend. Um, do you maybe want to sing something for us? Uh, if I was more prepared, I mean, that's how trained I am. If, if, if I knew I was going to sing, I would do it. But the next, if you have me on the show the next time, I'll make sure I have an, all, an entire aria ready for you to go. Yay. Awesome. Definitely be going to schedule that because I'd love to hear yes. you. Yes. Yes. Angela, tell me a little bit about the business, um, the pageantry. Well, the pageantry business, um, it's a great opportunity for a lot of young women. I have so many women that have gone on to fantastic careers uh, like yourself, 
Some of them have gone on to have their own television shows. They've gone on to journalism. I have one girl that became a cardiologist, another girl that became an anesthesiologist. And it really does empower them. We have a saying in my particular pageant. In fact, uh, we always say our crown is the key to your success. But our motto is we're more than a pageant, more than just beauty. We are a way of life for all women. And the reason we say that is because we open up a lot of doors for them. We give them, once they put that crown and that banner on, we show them the way, we show them the path that if they want to get into the entertainment industry, they can do that. If they want to become professional models, they can do that. If they want a business career, if they want to do community service. By having that title, they're opening up all their doors. I mean, they we, we provide the opportunities. They have to take it to the next level. But it's there for them. You know, it's, it's there for the taking. If they want to really expand their careers and want to expand opportunities in life, that's what we're here for. And as a matter of fact, my husband and I were talking about something uh, the other evening. I had a young lady that came to me many years ago and she was so, so shy. I mean, she would, when she would talk to you, she would actually put her head down like this. She got involved with my pageant and it, it was like creating another person. I was so proud of her that she went on uh, to become a, a computer analyst. She started her own pageant. She started her own website company. Uh, and today she's an executive of a company. And here's a girl that was so shy that wouldn't even look at a person straight in the face to now be an executive of a company. So this is what pageants can really do for women. It really empowers them. It's a great opportunity for them to take their, their lives and their careers really to the next level. I still believe that, you know, it's all about boosting confidence. And I encourage all the, um, the moms that have young girls as well, you know, just enroll them at modeling classes and let them just go that stride. Because, I mean, the same thing happened to my daughter. Um, she was very, she had a low self-esteem, uh, very introverted. And I introduced her to modeling and, and now she's a global speaker. So it just, it's amazing what it can do for you. And, and you know, with pageantry as well, you know, with me being Mrs. Johannes, but 2019, I know what it is like to get onto that stage. Uh, you're going to have the confidence to stretch your stuff and, and be there. Otherwise, you're going to have jiggly legs. You know, we've all been through that when we started training and, and just doing the stage act. But um, just on your pageants itself, um, how does it work? So you have the uh, Miss International World and you've got the Latina International. How does that Correct. work in terms of uh, being international? So does each country have their own pageant and then they take the winner that goes into the, the international pageant or how does it work? Okay, it works a few different ways. You're right. We have a few directors uh, right now. We have a director in Sri Lanka, a director in South, believe it or not, in South Africa, um, Mercia Tang, who happened to be our Miss International World Classic a few years ago. And we just partnered with um, Dr. Rashata Puranek in uh, India. Now, she's also the CEO for the uh, International Glamour Project. She's also our current reigning Miss India, and she's a director for us. So she is having a pageant where she'll be crowning several uh, women to send to my organization as well. And we are also going to start something in the United States, um, a training program where we can really train these women every step of the way that by the time they get to the main pageant, they are so well trained, they'll know exactly what to do. But here in the United States, something that we've also done, um, we did on the Latin side and we also do it on the international world side, that if a girl has a uh, background, let's say um, her parents are from England, but she's living here in the States, she could represent this international world, England, uh, because she does have that background and she stays, you know, she stays with her roots, but at the same time, she is living here. So we do take girls from their respective countries, but we'll also take girls from the United States that have a background of that particular country. That is very interesting. And I'm sure whoever's watching, he has an opportunity, go in there, register, and let's see you on the world stage. But Angela, just besides the pageantry, um, what else do you do? A little bit of everything. I mean, uh, besides pageantry, uh, believe it or not, <laughs> I never like to get political, but I do get involved with politics. Um, I'm actually lobbying right now with the CDC to get the cruise lines going. Um, 
I work on a, I work with a couple of congresswomen. And what I really do is when I get involved in that, it's, it's more for women's rights. Um, that's where pageantry kind of crosses over because I really think right now that uh, people say it's, it's getting more towards a woman's world. And I was uh, listening to the news this morning and they're trying to raise the minimum wage for women that if they do the same job as a man, they should get paid the exact same thing that a man gets paid. And they've been fighting this in Congress for so long. But I think they're very close right now to signing that bill that that will become law. So I do get involved with that. I believe women's voices should be heard. Uh, I mean, if a woman's going to be CEO of a company, why can, she, why can she not make the same money that if a man had that job? So I'm all about women's rights. Um, I love to dance in my, my spare time. I love to work out. I'm always working out. Um, spend time with my husband. I'm a big science fiction bug. On a Saturday night, it's science fiction night. Okay, so you'll find me from 8 o'clock to 1 o'clock in the morning catching up on all my science fiction films. So those are some of the things that I enjoy doing when I'm not getting involved with the pageant. You have such an interesting life. Do you also like traveling? I love traveling. I mean, it's been a little standstill with the pandemic right now, but I yes. love to travel. I mean, at one point I went halfway around the world. I've been in Greece, I've been in Australia, I've been in Japan, I've been in England. My husband had a fantastic job at one time. He worked for uh, well, two communication companies. One was MCI and the other one was Cable and Wireless who's very well known around the world. And every time he'd get a trip, guess who snuck in the suitcase? It was me. <laughs> <laughs> so I had an opportunity to travel with him. But what I love about traveling, it's, it's a great education. You get to know how other people live, see their lifestyles, and then you come home and say, geez, you know what? The grass, sometimes the grass is not greener on the other side of the street. So it's an education. You get to react with people. You learn different cultures. And that's what makes you a, a, a better person or a greater person, because then you learn how to get along with the rest of the world. So I find that is a great opportunity. That is so true. Have you been to Africa? No, that's a place I haven't been. Almost got there. OK, but uh, unfortunately, that was a trip that my husband didn't get a chance to go on. But it is something that that's on my bucket list to definitely visit, uh, visit South Africa. Oh, we'd love to have you. That would be awesome to have you here and just experience um, our country as well. It's a beautiful country. Yes. That's what I've heard. In fact, my girl in Nigeria, she's been begging me to come to Nigeria. So I, and, you know, I'm fully vaccinated. So I do have a travel card now that says I can travel. So uh, I'm hoping that when they start lifting some of the travel restrictions here, the CDC is still a little tough. Uh, they're still not, they're saying that we still should not travel, but I think now that more and more people are getting vaccinated, that's going to loosen up. So hopefully by the end of this year, next year, I can definitely travel and definitely get over to South Africa. And yeah. we would love to do a pageant there. I think there's so many women, uh, beautiful women from South Africa. I saw that when I was at the Mrs. Globe pageant in Greece uh, several years ago. So we would love to come there and do a preliminary and crown a girl that could come into the international pageant. Oh, that would be awesome. Yes, definitely. I'll help you with that. So we must stay in contact. Oh, that would be fabulous. Yes, that would be fabulous. And I'm looking forward to see you getting your award this weekend. I'm actually doing a presentation on uh, 100 successful women in business on um, how pageants empower women. So I'll be doing a 15 minute presentation on that as well. As a matter of fact, I have to mention this with 100 successful women in business, Al Otero, who is the president of the company who I've known Al for 20 years. He was one of the founders of Ms. Latina International along with me. And he encouraged me to start Ms. International World. That is amazing. Wow, what a small world. Right, what a small world. Al has been with me right from the beginning. In fact, when I, when I went to him, uh, because he was working with another chamber at the time, the Broward County Chamber, and that's how I met him when I joined the chamber. And I told him of my vision about starting a pageant. And he looked at me with two heads. He says, a pageant? He said, are you crazy? And I said, wait a minute, Al, I'm going to do something different. I said, look, there's a lot, you know, this, the Latin market in South Florida is very big. And I said to him, I said, look, there's a lot of Latin pageants, but no one's doing a crossover into the American market. And no one's doing a scholarship. And that's what changed him. And he said, you know what? Let me help you get this off the ground. And he did. 
we both worked on getting Nova Southeastern University as a sponsor where we got $40,000 a piece, $80,000 in scholarships. One went for the miss and one went for the team. So we started that scholarship program. And in fact, um, we did something with Pageant Planet this past year where our team raised money. She got $2,000 towards the scholarship program. So thanks to Al, we've been able to maintain that integrity of the pageant. That is such a great incentive. Well done on that. Oh, yes. yes, absolutely. So what's the future plans for Miss International World? One of the future plans for Miss International World is, and we're on the right track. It's a lot of, lot of work, but it looks like we're going to be recognized by the United Nations to get an ambassadorship to the United Nations where we can present our platform and we can present our platform for women of the world and show that we are more like our motto says, we are more than just a beauty pageant. We're a way of life for women and the door is open to empower women around the world. That and is really great. our future plans. And that is definitely going to happen. I can see that happening. Yes, I can too. It's a lot of work, but I'm going to make it happen. Hopefully by the end of this year, that will definitely be something that we can advertise. I mean, we were voted Best International Pageant USA by Lux Magazine, which actually is shown in Europe. Uh, it's uh, produced out of London. And then Pageant Planet just voted us uh, Best Miss Pageant of 2020. So we were very honored and very happy to get that. So if we get this ambassadorship, that'll be something that uh, will really be an honor for us. Awesome. So you say your pageants are successful. How do you measure success? I think I, I say this in every interview. I do not measure success but what I, by what I do. I measure success about the people that are with me and the people that help me get to where I am today. That is how I measure success. There's an old saying, you never do anything alone. Okay, and if you don't remember that when you get to the top, then there's no sense of going any further. So my success is measured by all the wonderful people that I've had the distinct pleasure of working with and hopefully we'll continue working with. I love that. I, I, I simply love that message. Angela, is there anything that you'd like to add? Well, I think we've covered everything, but uh, one of the things I'd like to say is that um, to everyone out there is that there is hope. Uh, we are seeing great lights at the end of the tunnel. And I think we have to believe in one another. And if you can just keep that vision of hope, then that is what's going to make the world a better place to live. You know, there's a, there's a song that says, he ain't heavy, he's my brother. If we can keep that in our minds and work with one another and uh, you just have great passion for the things that we do, I think that the world, like I said, will become a better place to live. We'll all get along. All creative differences, but there's no need to argue with a person. There's no need. We, you just probably heard it in the States. We've had, um, it's, you know, unbelievable two massive shootings. There's no reason why people have to go out and shoot one another. There's no reason for that. You can disagree. You can argue. But at the end, um, some sort of common ground, get along, and I think things will go forward. But there is light at the, at the end of the tunnel. I can see that with the pandemic and I can see the way people are starting to evolve. So I think one of the things that I always continue to work on is make myself a better person. If I become a better person, I know that I can contribute more to the world to become a better place to live. Yes, it all starts with us. Um, it's International Women's exactly. Month. Um, Angela, what is your power message to the women out there? Just keep doing what you're doing. I mean, women are becoming successful. Keep your voice out there. Uh, make your voice known. Whatever you do, uh, just make, make your voice known. Be successful. I think women are successful no matter what they do. Even if a woman has children at home and she's raising their children and she's a mom, that's success in itself. That's a hard job to raise women. So I think all women should be empowered no matter what they do, if they're an executive of a company or they're with their children or their teachers, especially teachers that teach us to go forward, 
just get that message out there. Stay beautiful, stay how you are, and you'll be surprised how you're going to be recognized. Beautiful message from a beautiful woman. Thank you so much, Angela. How can one get hold of you? Well, they can uh, definitely find me on uh, social media. I'm on there with my personal page, Angela Basilico. We also have uh, another page, MS International World, MS Latina International. And on Instagram, we are on uh, Ms. MS International World. They can also visit our website at www.msinternationalworld.com. Plenty of ways to find us. There you have it, ladies. Um, beautiful Angela chatting to me on the Red Corner Show. Angela, I wish you everything of the best and I'm hoping that I can meet you at some point. And I look forward to seeing you this weekend yes. at the 100 Successful Women in Business event. Um, thank you so much for the chat. I thoroughly enjoyed it and we will be in touch soon. Thank you. Good night. Yes, and it was an, it was an honor to, uh, to be here with you and definitely invite me back the next time because I'll make sure I have a whole aria for you. It'll be a half hour show of music. I'm looking forward to that. And I'm going to schedule that for sure. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you. And you too. Bye. Bye-bye now.